The Place, Ford Motor Company's Dearborn, Michigan Test Track. The event, the 1992 Ford Long Lead Press Preview, where distinguished members of the automotive press strap themselves in and test drive the best new models Ford has ever produced. In areas of quality, drivability, styling, and safety, Ford continues to lead for 1992. And as usual, Ford has a few surprises in store for the competition. New design and engineering features that make owning and driving a new Ford more satisfying than ever. Of course, along with the advancements that make Ford vehicles winners, come a number of changes in the features included on these new cars and trucks. With that in mind, here's a brief look at the features you should be aware of as the 1992 Ford models begin rolling into your service department. Escort for 1992 remains a leading value in the compact field. The most significant change is the addition of a new four-door LX and LXE notchback sedans to the Escort line. One visible distinction is the addition of 14-inch wheels and tires on both models. The LXE will also be equipped with a sport suspension package and four-wheel disc brakes. The most significant changes for 1992 comes in the form of subtle refinements to the 1.8 and 1.9 liter engines. Both engines are now available with an optional engine block heater this year. In addition, the 1.9 liter engine throttle plate has been redesigned and coated to resist sludge. And the 1.9 liter engine uses a new rocker arm baffle for better oil recovery. And as the model year progresses, you'll see running changes that include an optional pony comfort group with air conditioning and power steering. While some of the competition's so-called entry-level cars have been stretched and loaded beyond the budgets of first-time buyers, the 92 Festiva will stick with a tried-and-true design that spells value to old or new Ford customers. Functionally, Festiva will remain unchanged through this model year. However, Festiva customers may now select a new sport option with appearance items including a rear spoiler, new graphics, and sport cloth interior trim. Sophisticated engineering and exciting performance are at the heart of Probe's sales popularity. And Probe's handling and safety assets will be even better for 1992 with the new four-wheel anti-lock brake system. Check the new technical service features video segment that follows this overview for details on servicing this new system. Appearance changes are subtle. However, improved performance and drivability head the list of changes to Ford Tempo for 1992, further enhancing an already strong line. A 3-liter V6 engine with sequential electronic fuel injection, or CEFI, is standard on the Tempo GLS this year and optional on both the GL and LX models. Tempo's standard 2.3 liter inline four-cylinder engine also receives revisions for 1992. Cephi and a mass airflow sensor have been added for improved idle quality and fuel economy. Tempo drivability has been improved with the addition of 15-inch wheels and tires as standard equipment on GLS models and a standard rear stabilizer bar on all models equipped with V6 engines. In the appearance department, the 1992 Tempo will take on a fresh look through the effect of a new monotone appearance. Thin color-keyed body side moldings and restyled tail lamps on four-door models. Capped by added passenger comfort through improvements to the air conditioning system, Tempo promises to be a world-class competitor for 1992. Taurus, the car which most agree changed the course of domestic automotive design six years ago. For 1992, it's doing it again with fresh styling, inside and out, along with the performance and safety improvements you'd expect from a winner. Taurus looks new because it is. In fact, almost every inch of sheet metal is new for 1992. The addition of new rocker panel moldings to the L and GL models adds to their curb appeal, while a new front end treatment further distinguishes the show. Tinted outside rear view mirrors help to reduce glare and driver fatigue. 
A new two-piece wheel cover design is now used on Taurus vehicles. Only the center portion of the cover is removed to access the wheel lug nuts. And finally, you'll see a total of nine new exterior colors available on the various Taurus models. A further enhancement to the sheet metal updates. Inside Taurus, the most visual changes are those that add to driver comfort and convenience. They include a new driver-oriented instrument panel that features remote radio controls for the memory, seat, and volume functions. For 1992, there are two new audio systems available on selected Ford vehicles. The Electronic Search Radio, or ESR, and the Premium Analog Cassette, or PAC Radio. The PAC Radio is an option on Taurus models. The PAC features a multifunction audio button which selects bass, treble, speaker balance, and speaker fade functions. The PAC Radio controls feature station preset. To preset stations during pre-delivery, depress and hold the auto preset button for at least three seconds. The radio will automatically select and sequence six strong stations for the band that's displayed. The premium cassette function now features motorized tape loading. Simply insert the cassette a short distance and the tape automatically loads. The electronic search radio is standard on Taurus. The ESR with an auto reverse cassette is called the ESC and is an option on Taurus. Like the pack radio, treble, bass, balance and fade functions are controlled by the audio button. For complete details on audio system operation, refer to the Ford Electronic Sound Systems Operating Guide supplied with the owner's packet. Illuminated lock and window controls add to nighttime driving convenience. LX models also receive new cloth bucket seats with console as standard equipment for 92. Split bench seats may still be substituted, however. Yet the most significant interior improvements are difficult to detect but they add substantially to both driver and passenger convenience and safety. First, the new one touchdown driver side power window is included with the power window option for added convenience. Next, a remote lift gate release has been added to all wagon models. Safety and security have been enhanced with the addition of the auto lamp system as standard equipment on LX and show models. Also in the interest of safety, a brake shift interlock feature has been added to all Taurus models equipped with automatic transmissions in 1992. But by far the most significant feature for today's safety conscious owners is new passenger side supplemental airbag restraint systems offered as an option for 1992. Incidentally, you'll probably want to check the new technical service features video program that follows this overview for a complete rundown on operation and diagnostics for both the one touchdown windows and the airbag restraint systems. While its appearance and convenience are impressive, Taurus also receives a boost in efficiency under the hood for 1992. Reliability and durability of the 3 liter V6 engine is increased while mechanical noise is minimized through the use of a redesigned distributor gear. An improved air filter system has also been added in the interest of engine durability. Finally, in the drivability department, variable assist power steering is now standard on Taurus LX models. And ride control is even further improved through revised strut valving. The logic is simple. Take a great car and make it even better. That's Taurus for 1992. Sportiness and performance within reach of the budget conscious have made Mustang both a classic and a trendsetter in automotive design. For 1992, Mustang will stick with the features that made it a success last year. However, the addition of two comfort and convenience features will add even more value for the car buying dollar. Optional power seats include a new four-way track as compared with two-way on previous models. And a new dome lamp will be similar in design to that used on Taurus models. The 92 Mustang another step closer to driving perfection. Like Mustang, the unsurpassed popularity of Thunderbird has convinced the company not to change its design radically in 1992. Changes to Thunderbird are subtle, 
the most obvious being full-width illuminated tail lamps as a standard styling touch on all models. In the service bay, you may also notice the addition of a new straight-through exhaust system. Personal luxury and impressive performance, all in one sleek package. Thunderbird for 1992. Crown Victoria is elegant proof that traditional luxury can be enjoyed in a car which also displays unusually precise road manners. The 1992 Crown Victoria was introduced earlier. Refer to the 1992 Crown Victoria Grand Marquis, new model reference book and video for information on Crown Victoria's features. Continuous improvement. That's the key to Ford's success in planning new product features for its passenger car lineup. And it's also the philosophy behind some significant new improvements in the Ford light truck lineup for 1992. Let's take a look. The light truck market, it's hot, but it's tough. It takes just the right combination of vehicle improvements and service knowledge to stay on top. That's precisely what Ford has accomplished through a series of important new engineering and design features for 1992. Its overall design and individual features made Explorer an immediate hit in the compact sport utility market. And its new drivability and convenience features promised to make it even more popular in 1992. Outside, Explorer will feature several enhancements, including new color accented cast aluminum wheels on Eddie Bauer models, rear wiper washer defroster system added to Sport and XLT models as a running change, and optional privacy glass on four-door models, also introduced as a running change. Inside, Explorer passengers will enjoy the benefits of an improved air conditioning system. Explorer models equipped with the power window option will also feature the new one touchdown feature for the driver's side window. You'll find details on operation and testing procedures for this system in the new service features video program that follows. Eddie Bauer models may be equipped with optional sport bucket seats featuring six-way power adjustment. Add this year's improvements to the sport utility that's already the sales leader, and Explorer's record is almost certain to stand through 1992. Still the sales leader among compact pickups, Ranger makes significant strides in durability and drivability for 1992. In keeping with Ford's continuous improvement in quality and durability, increased use of galvanized steel will apply to all Ranger models this year. Powertrain changes for 1992 include availability of the 2.3 liter inline four-cylinder engine with manual transmission on both the Custom and XLT Super Cab models with two-wheel drive. This engine was previously available only on the Custom model and expanded availability will be on a running change basis. The 3 liter V6 engine now uses a roller tappet valve train and Cephe. These changes improve fuel economy and drivability. On the Ranger's interior, the wiper control switch has been modified this year for convenience. The off position is now at the beginning of the switch travel. For sure, flatter cornering, all Ranger models equipped with power steering will also have a front stabilizer bar this year. Ford Ranger, the quality and value it provides combined with your attention to superior service are certain to keep it ahead of the pack for 1992. A 25-year heritage of durability and work power combined with driver-friendly comforts. That's what Ford Bronco brings to the full-size utility arena for 1992. It's only fitting that a silver anniversary edition of the Bronco will be available this year. A bold statement of this model's staying power, regardless of the competition. Aside from exterior and interior enhancements, Bronco will remain essentially unchanged this year. It will remain a first choice of drivers who demand full-size working power along with full-size comfort. It's no secret that the full-size pickup market is getting tougher every year, but features added to the Ford lineup for 1992 should catch the competition off guard once again. On the outside, F-Series trucks take on a fresh look particularly the vehicle front, body side moldings, exterior badges, and graphics, and the tailgate. Other exterior restyling touches include new mirror and wheel options, 
new bumpers on some models, and additional finish colors. The flare side body style is back and available on F-Series for 1992. Interior editions include such features as power lumbar support on models fitted with captain's chairs or cloth flight bench seats, a standard tachometer on F-150 models equipped with XLS trim, and a new upgrade package for selected trucks. A new multifunction stock control has also been added to put operations readily at the driver's hands. You should also be aware that a neutral start switch has been added to the F-150 models for improved safety. NVH improvements are also made through the use of new vent window seals and windshield moldings. Added convenience is also provided this year through the addition of automatic hub locks on F-250 trucks equipped with four-wheel drive. Perhaps the biggest news in Ford truck advancements for 1992 are the new offerings of a thriving van market. And the news obviously begins with the Econoline van and club wagon, both completely restyled to satisfy more contemporary tastes. Outside, a new flush aero headlamp and redesigned grille further distinguish the new models. But the beauty isn't just skin deep. A new car-like instrument panel not only improves interior appearance, but is more driver-friendly than previous panels. Econoline and other models equipped with the E40D transmission now have the overdrive switch located on the shifter. A new electronic speed control system with a tap-up, tap-down feature is now available on Econoline. A new transmission fluid level sensor and indicator also add to driver convenience. The 1992 Econoline has available a new remote keyless entry system with a battery saver feature. From up to 30 feet away from the vehicle, the doors can be locked or unlocked and the anti-theft system armed or disarmed with the touch of a handheld transmitter. With safety a growing concern, Ford has responded with the addition of a new driver side airbag supplemental restraint system as standard equipment in all 1992 light duty club wagon models. A multifunction stock control has also been added for 1992. This control is similar in design and operation to that used in Ranger models. Finally, interior door panel attachments on club wagon have been revised for 1992. You'll find a detailed review of R&I procedures in the new service features video presentation. Improvements in the suspension system begin with a twin I-beam front suspension system that now allows camber and caster adjustments. They're covered thoroughly in your service manual. Additional tuning to suspension and steering components have produced more precise ride, handling, and steering characteristics. With work applications in mind, the rear bumper on Econoline models has been redesigned to accept a clamp-on type trailer hitch. And finally, the wiring harness and trailer wiring have been modified to better meet the needs of aftermarket converters. Refer to your new service manuals for detailed information on these electrical system modifications. Ford has taken a good design and made it even better in the 1992 Aerostar wagon and van models. Outside, a new flush aero headlamp treatment and redesigned grille further distinguish the new models. But inside, Aerostar receives major improvements in the way of a new car-like instrument panel with integral glove box and improved ergonomics. A new column-mounted shift lever for models equipped with the automatic transmission leaves more space for driver and passenger. A new multifunction stock control further enhances driver convenience and control. And the available driver side supplemental airbag restraint system improves Aerostar's functional appeal to safety conscious drivers. Ford for 1992. The best just keeps on getting better. In the service bay, the big news for 92 will be the arrival of the service bay diagnostic system or SBDS. Already over 2,100 of these units have been ordered. SBDS is a high-powered tool that assists in providing quick and accurate diagnosis of electromechanical drivetrain problems. In addition to the computer and adapters, 
The SBDS cart includes a portable vehicle analyzer that can be used during road tests, a customer flight recorder to help diagnose those hard-to-find intermittent concerns, and 29 electronic diagnostic tools. We're glad you could join us for the 1992 Longleat Press Preview and look forward to next year when we'll again examine the exciting innovations you've come to expect from Ford. A big part of Ford's success is you. Your skills and expertise in the service department are what keep our customers coming back. Ford Parts and Service Division's technical training provides training programs and instructional materials to keep you up to date on new features and service procedures. With that in mind, please continue on to the Ford New Technical Service Features video program. This program will provide you with details on how these new features will affect your service procedures. Continuous improvement in engineering and design. That's what keeps Ford a step ahead of the competition on the road. And the same kind of continuous improvement in your service skills is what keeps Ford ahead over the long haul. You've probably already seen an overview of the Ford new model features for 1992. Now we're going to take a close-up look at some of those features, their operation, and new diagnosis procedures. Here's a quick review of the most important service features you'll see. We'll be covering updated passenger restraint systems on several models. We'll also be looking at operation and test procedures for the new programmable speedometer odometer module, or PSOM, found on F-Series trucks and other selected truck models. We'll also cover the one touchdown driver's side power window that is new for 92. And of course, we'll be taking a look at what's new in the totally redesigned Econoline and Club Wagon models. Those are just a few of the highlights. Now let's take a closer look, beginning with Probe for 1992. Probe for 1992 features improved drivability as a result of improvements to the anti-lock brake system on LX and GT models. The new brake system appeared as a running change in 1991. Operation of the new system is essentially the same as that of earlier versions. The ABS control module, located underneath the driver's seat, monitors wheel speed. If a wheel approaches lockup, the module signals hydraulic valves to limit pressure to that wheel. However, the hydraulic actuator assembly on this new system has been redesigned to eliminate the accumulator. The assembly houses four control solenoids and is serviced as a unit. Also, a new master cylinder facilitates pressure changes resulting from ABS operation. For further details on testing the probe ABS system, consult the appropriate section in your service manual. The 1992 Taurus, along with other models, includes a new feature that will require updated diagnostic and test procedures. The new one touchdown driver side window on models equipped with the power window option. Operation of the one touchdown feature is simple. Depressing the down switch for four tenths of a second or less fully opens the window automatically. When the down switch is depressed for five tenths of a second or longer, window travel will stop when the switch is released. If the window is traveling down in the automatic mode, it may be stopped at any location by tapping either up or down on the switch. Testing operation of this new power window feature is also fairly simple. Remove the driver's side door trim panel and disconnect the connector at the one touchdown module. With the ignition switch in the accessory position, connect either a 12 volt test lamp or volt ohm meter between pin 5, which is the ground, and pin 3, which feeds power. The lamp should light. If you are using a voltmeter, it should read battery voltage. Next, check the voltage between pin 3 and pin 1, the motor. Again, the lamp should light or the voltmeter should read battery voltage. Do the same between pin 3 and pin 2, which controls the driver's power window switch down. The lamp should light, or the voltmeter should read battery voltage again. 
Finally, check between pin 3 and pin 4, controlling the driver's power window switch up. The lamp should light, or the voltmeter should read battery voltage. To check the one touchdown module, remove the module from the car. Check continuity between pins 1 and 2 using a self-powered test lamp or ohm meter. The lamp should light, or if you are using an ohm meter, it should read zero ohms. Do the same between pins 1 and 3. This time, however, the lamp should not light. If you are using an ohm meter, it should read infinity. If the one touchdown module fails any of the continuity tests, do not attempt to service the module. Replace it as a unit. For complete details on diagnostics, be sure to consult your service manual. Safety is becoming a top priority for customers today. And Ford is coming through with the expanded availability of supplemental airbag restraint systems. Several models employ driver's side airbags and even optional passenger side airbags which require different test procedures. So it is important to consult your service manual for the types and locations of components. Before we move on to service precautions, testing and diagnosis, here are the basic principles and components that all the airbag systems share. First is the business end of the system, the airbag module assembly. It'll be positioned either in the steering wheel hub or in the instrument panel on the passenger side. Note that these modules are serviced as assemblies only. Individual components are not replaceable. The airbag module itself is controlled by three sensors which react to impacts according to their direction and force. Previous systems used either four or five sensors, depending upon vehicle application. At least two sensors, one safing sensor and one crash sensor, must be activated simultaneously in order to trigger airbag inflation. For service purposes, a diagnostic module includes a microprocessor which monitors system operation and provides coded readouts during diagnosis. Another component that all the airbag systems share is a system readiness indicator. This is simply a lamp marked airbag on the instrument cluster. It should illuminate for about six seconds each time the ignition is switched from off to run. If the indicator fails to light, there is a fault in the airbag system. The same is true if the light is illuminated but fails to shut off. Or if the light flashes on and off, that may also indicate a problem. This condition may not occur until approximately 30 seconds after the ignition switch has been turned to run, the time required for the diagnostic monitor to test the system. If the airbag readiness indicator is inoperative and a system fault exists, you should hear an audible signal. This tone pattern consists of five sets of five beeps and warns that the airbag readiness indicator must be serviced before further testing and diagnosis can be performed. We'll move on to testing and diagnostic procedures in a moment, but first, a few words about safety during the service procedure. Remember that the airbag system has the potential to cause injury unless you observe some simple, common sense safety precautions during the service procedure. With that in mind, remember these key safety precautions prior to diagnosis or service. First, remember to completely deplete the backup power supply. The diagnostic module contains an integral backup power provision, allowing airbags to be inflated in the event that the battery is disabled in a collision. Previous systems used a separate backup power supply to perform this function. To disarm the backup power on this new system, disconnect the positive battery cable and wait at least one minute. When working with an airbag, always wear safety glasses and when carrying an airbag module, point the trim cover away from your body. When setting an airbag module down, be sure to face the trim cover up to reduce impact in case of an accidental deployment. Even when you're handling an airbag which has already been deployed, the bag surface may contain small amounts of sodium hydroxide, a mildly caustic chemical produced by the propellant. To avoid skin or eye irritation, always wear gloves and safety glasses. And once again, because components including the sensors, clock spring, monitor, and airbag are critical to safety, 
Do not attempt to service them. Always replace them. If a replacement component fails to correct a problem, reinstall the original part and repeat the diagnostic procedure. Next, never attempt to probe the connectors within the airbag system. Doing so could complete a ground and trigger accidental deployment. Also, when you consult your service manual and see the word disconnect, it never refers to a system component. It always refers to an electrical connector. And finally, if an airbag equipped vehicle has been damaged, always check sensors and sensor mounting areas for damage. This applies whether or not the airbag actually deployed. Questionable sensors should be replaced and damaged mounting areas should be restored to original condition. With those safety factors in mind, you're ready to begin diagnosis and testing of the airbag system with the help of one special tool, the Rotunda Airbag Simulator. Before you begin diagnosis, deactivate the airbag system as described earlier by disconnecting the positive battery cable and waiting at least one minute for backup power to deplete. Next, remove the four nut and washer assembly securing the airbag module. Then, disconnect the airbag connector and install the rotunda airbag simulator on the vehicle harness at the top of the steering wheel. If the vehicle is equipped with an optional passenger side airbag, repeat this procedure and connect a second simulator. Finally, reconnect the battery and proceed with diagnostic testing. Once you've properly connected the airbag simulator, any system faults will be displayed on the airbag indicator in the form of two separate series of flashes. Read correctly, these flashes represent a two-digit code. For example, this first series of three quick flashes represents three. After a one-second pause, the second series of two quick flashes represents a two. Together, they form 32, a two-digit system error code which will be listed in the appropriate service manual. If more than one fault exists in the system, only the code representing the highest priority will flash until that fault has been corrected. Remember also that you'll hear an audible tone if the airbag readiness system is malfunctioning and a system fault exists. Again, the readiness system must be in working order prior to any diagnostic testing. Also, it's important to remember that airbag systems installed in various Ford models may use different codes for the same fault. Check the appropriate service manual for correct diagnosis. Once you've completed diagnostic testing, the airbag system may be reactivated. First, disconnect the positive battery cable once more and wait at least one minute for backup power to deplete. Then remove the simulators and reconnect the airbag modules. Finally, reconnect the positive battery cable and be certain to verify proper operation by checking the airbag lamp. Another new safety feature for the 1992 Crown Victoria is the availability of an optional four-wheel anti-lock brake system with traction assist. An adaptation of a system used previously on the Lincoln Town Car, traction assist is essentially an extension of the anti-lock brake system, except that it operates during acceleration. Control circuitry detects when either of the rear drive wheels begin to spin during acceleration. Then the ABS module rapidly pulses the brake on the affected rear wheel until traction is re-established. The traction assist remains operable up to approximately 25 miles per hour and decreases gradually until it becomes inoperable at about 34 miles per hour. The system also prevents brake overheating by monitoring the frequency of traction assist operation. And traction assist becomes inoperable whenever the brakes are applied. During service, the anti-lock breakout box bleeding adapter or its equivalent is used alone for master cylinder and hydraulic control unit bleeding. It can also be used with the Rotunda EEC-4 breakout box or its equivalent for diagnostic tests. Check your service manual for detailed service and diagnostic procedures on this system. The front suspension on Crown Victoria for 1992 has also undergone extensive redesign. It now includes components that were already in use on the Lincoln Town Car. Two adjusting cams now allow camber and caster to be adjusted without the use of special tools. The suspension also incorporates new pre-lubed 
sealed for life upper ball joints, as well as ball joints where stabilizer bars are connected. Sealed, pre-lubricated cartridge type ball bearing sets now replace the older tapered roller bearings, eliminating the need to repack. Handling is aided by a new one-to-one -one direct link stabilizer bar connected to the spindles through double ball joint links. Finally, a new air suspension system is now available on Crown Victoria. This new system has previously been used on the Lincoln Town Car. Consult your service manual for specific service procedures on the Crown Victoria suspension system. Topping off the changes to the 1992 Crown Victoria is a new instrument panel. The new Ford F-Series trucks for 1992 include two key features that may affect your service procedures. The first is a new programmable speedometer odometer module, or PSOM. Most importantly, this module may be reprogrammed for varying tire and axle sizes. The PSOM module receives an AC voltage input signal from the rear wheel anti-lock brake, or RABS sensor, through two wires. One is labeled Speed Plus, located at pin 4 of the PSOM module. The other is labeled Speed Minus, located at pin 5. The module also includes a speed out wire, providing a vehicle speed signal to the EEC module and the speed control if equipped. Finally, the module includes a dealer mode enable wire used for reprogramming the PSOM system. Service begins with a self-test of the overall PSOM system. First, switch the ignition on while depressing the reset button on the speedometer. The module should now run through a prove-out sweep. The speedometer should sweep smoothly from zero miles per hour through its maximum range, then back to zero. The PSOM speedometer assembly should be replaced if the pointer jumps or hesitates, or if the speedometer pointer fails to move and the odometer display indicates the ROM revision level information. If there is no pointer movement and no odometer display, the power circuits are suspect. Partial removal of the instrument cluster allows testing for power and ground. Use a volt ohm meter to perform power and ground tests beginning with pin number one. It should have voltage at all times. Pin number three should show voltage only when the ignition is switched on. If both of these measurements are correct, move on to test the ground circuit for excessive resistance. With the ignition switched off, resistance between pin 2 and the vehicle chassis should be no more than 1 ohm. If it exceeds that limit, find the source of the additional resistance and correct the problem. The next test you may perform is testing the speed input from the RABS speed sensor. The RABS sensor used with PSOM systems is identical to those used previously. With that in mind, Check the appropriate service manual for details on voltage and resistance tests. Next, the PSOM module is also designed to quickly test the odometer segments for correct display. First, turn the ignition switch to the on position while holding the reset button. The speedometer pointer then performs its prove out sweep. If you push the select button after the speedometer completes the prove out, the module will automatically go into an odometer display test mode and should read all zeros. Pressing the select button again should result in a display of all ones. Repeating the procedure will take you up through a display of all nines. One side note, the odometer liquid crystal display on the far left is capable of correctly displaying the digits one, two, and three. Do not be concerned if other digits are only partially displayed. Finally, be certain to refer to the appropriate Ford service manual for detailed information on the display test sequence. Next comes programming the PSOM system for varying tire or axle sizes. We'll run through a typical reprogramming procedure. However, it's very important to refer to the appropriate service manual for detailed programming information. Again, begin this procedure by switching the ignition on and holding the reset button. The speedometer pointer will prove out as it did in the self-test. After proving out, the odometer will display the resident program in the PSOM module. 
The letter E indicates that the program is based on English miles rather than metric kilometers. The next two characters indicate the read-only memory or ROM revision level. This refers to a permanent program that can only be revised at the factory. Pushing the reset button a second time will bring up a readout of the conversion constant and the word cal. This conversion constant is the programmable portion of the PSOM program. If the odometer displays a conversion constant number such as 1050, a corresponding number in the service manual will be listed as 10.50. Conversion constants in the manual will range between 5.0 and 11.0. To change the conversion constant, locate the dealer mode enable wire under the dashboard. This wire is connected to pin number 9 on the PSOM module connector. Next, switch the ignition off. Then, ground the enable wire. Then, Press and hold the reset button and switch the ignition on and release the reset button. The pointer will then prove out and the odometer should then display the conversion constant along with the word CAL. To change the conversion constant, repeatedly press the select button until the desired conversion constant is displayed. After the conversion constant reaches 1100, it'll wrap back to 500 and begin counting up once again. If you want to save a new conversion value, just press the reset button. To stop the process without saving a new conversion constant, switch the ignition off. In order to discourage tampering, the conversion constant can be reset only three times. If the dealer mode wire is well grounded and you find that you cannot change the conversion constant using this method, the PSOM speedometer assembly must be replaced. Of course, the 1992 Econoline and Club Wagon models represent major news in the full-size van category. And there are some new service procedures you should be aware of before the first new model rolls into your dealership. To start, the new Econoline and Club Wagon models incorporate major design changes in both the vehicle main wiring and the trailer wiring. These changes were made in order to facilitate conversion and bodybuilding applications and they are covered thoroughly in your service manual. You'll also find that Econoline and Club Wagon models use a new 76 pin bulkhead connector. Other Ford models also use this connector. An additional wiring harness and 76 pin connector are provided on selected models for aftermarket conversions. For 1992, the Econoline adds to driver convenience. A new speed control system includes tap-up, tap-down operation. Once a speed is set into the system, each tap of the set Excel switch will increase the set speed by one mile per hour. Each momentary tap of the coast switch will decrease the set speed by one mile per hour. The heart of the speed control system is the electronic servo assembly located in the engine compartment near the brake booster. The new servo assembly has an integral amplifier. Also new to the system is the deactivator switch, a backup safety feature that replaces the vacuum dump valve. The switch opens when brake pedal effort of 5 to 10 pounds is applied. Refer to your service manual for diagnosing and servicing the new speed control system. Econoline vehicles use a new disc brake design. When servicing the brake pads, either of the pins may be removed to pivot the caliper and expose the brake pads. The pads are replaced in the same manner as previously. In order to avoid accidental damage to interior trim panels, you should also note that new panel fasteners are now being used on select models. Removal of panels on XLT and Chateau models is accomplished by first removing the upper control panel or halo assembly either by removing the retaining screws or gently popping the panel loose depending upon its application. Next, remove any handles or switches attached to the panel. Finally, lift the panel straight up to disengage the slide hook fasteners 
It may then be removed from the van. However, XLT and Chateau models use a new slide hook attachment which may be damaged if you attempt to remove a panel in the same manner as on previous models. All models except the XLT and Chateau use the rivet blind truss head type fastener. Aerostar for 1992 will feature a revised version of the rear anti-lock braking system or RABS. The new system will be known as RABS 2 and it features a keep alive memory or CAM which allows the module to remember a fault code even after the vehicle has been shut off. To avoid losing codes, the ignition must be switched on before disconnecting the RABS test connector located under the dash near the parking brake. Next, ground the black-orange connector to access the codes. Codes will begin to flash at the beginning of a code. This enables you to count the code correctly the first time. You'll notice the use of two new codes for this system. When 12 appears, there is a problem in the fluid level circuit. Check for either low fluid level or an open or short in the circuit. Code 16 will appear when the system is functioning correctly. The RABS 2 module is powered through a fused circuit. If you encounter a vehicle with a flashing rear anti-lock light, check the Keep Alive memory fuse. That covers the highlights of new service procedures for 1992. More detailed technical information will be provided in your technician's reference book, Ford service manuals, and service bulletins as they are released.